So, so I was, uh, before I hit the record, I was asking Danielle about a couple things. You guys do a photo contest. Actually, you've been doing this for the past 40 years, from what I understand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty yeah. significant. What's the photo contest? It's our National Wildlife Magazine photo contest, actually. Um, and for a very long time, it was all, you would mail in your photos, basically, and um, we had a pa panel of expert judges, many of who are still here, <laughs> um, and they would look over and select the best photos and, and award prizes, and then you would get your photo in our magazine. Um, what's, what's changed over the past couple of years is we've really tried to, um, with the web team and others, and you know, really tried to build out a social component and the online component to be more exciting. Hmm. Um, and just so you guys know, you know, it's a $20 entry fee, I believe, to, um, to enter the photo contest. Staff is actually not allowed to enter, so I can honestly say I've, I've never entered. But, hmm. um, you know, one of the things that you do is you can sign up and put in your email address and kind of um, and join the community and vote on photos. Um, but if you want your photo to actually be considered, you have to, you know, fully um, register and pay $20. So, and your, there are some cool options with it. You can say it's okay to donate this photo. Um, so let's say, you know, maybe it's, it's not a photo that um, you're worried about or something like that. You can actually donate it and it helps NWF um, hmm. and it's a really nice donation. Wow. Um, and, and so that actually then provides us content and, you know, gives us a chance to tell the stories of some of our photographers that maybe we, we don't get a chance to know. Um, and, and anyone can look through the photo contest entrance, and that's another fun piece, and you can actually vote up certain things while the contest is going on. So it's kind of a fun um, engagement campaign that we've built out over time. You know, we're slowly adding. Initially, you could enter online, and now it's not only can you enter online, but you can share your photo with your, your own personal networks um, and, and really kind of get to know some of the other photographers there because they can all share a story with the photo mm. and things like that. Do you definitely have beautiful photos? Even the cover images that you have on your Facebook page, do you get those from these photo contests? A lot of them are donated and we have really good relationships with the photographers and I think mm -hmm. this is a, a cool way to get to know them even better. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so why would someone, what's, what's the carrot or what's the incentive for, and how do people win? Is it the most likes on a photo gets the, gets the prize? Um, so we do have a people's choice option and that's where the voting comes in and you know our first year of doing people's choice we actually had it so that um, the most votes won. But a couple things happened and it didn't really work out the way we wanted it to mm. um, because if you enter the contest early you obviously have more time to win. Oh, yeah, right, because yeah. you're you have ton, and if you have a huge network, so what we ended up doing was revamping it. And this this time, and I think for the next phase as well, we're gonna do it so that there are weekly winners. So if you didn't win one week, you can try and win the next week, that kind of thing. Um, and then you know we try and focus on those people and give them um, a value like value add for winning. And I'm not sure what that'll be yet this year, but um, and and I think the carrot for most photographers. For this is is obviously I think it's it's a it's an award to get in the magazine you know and it's also the prize we do try and offer nice prizes um, several thousand dollars for the grand prize that kind of thing I think it's also just people love to share their photos and when you when you have these beautiful images um, you know it, it's just a neat way to to show off nature a little bit you know so and now outside of the photo contest do you find that people naturally just show up and post a photo like is that a consistent thing that people do. Definitely. Um, it's so important that they're sharing their experiences because not everyone gets to go to some of the national wildlife refuges or things like that. Um, and a lot of our members are, you know, they like to look at wildlife photos, but they don't necessarily go out there. We've actually started doing a lot of community albums on Facebook where we'll ask people, hey, send us in your pictures of squirrels or groundhogs or whatever, and we'll post them in one, one album and credit it to you, obviously. January was a uh, bald eagle watch month. Yep. So I asked people to send in um, their bald eagle pictures, and we put them in our Birds of Prey album on Facebook that's all community-driven. Yeah. I have a fun time with it. I mean, especially now that all the networks are getting so visual, mm -hmm. um, I have a really good time, you know, sharing those photos. Obviously, NWF, um, you know, that's part of our goal is to inspire. And what is more inspiring? You know, this is really great. And, and I'm thinking about the, the, the naysayer nonprofit um, who's l watching this video right now. And they're thinking, 
oh, it's great that people submit photos and yeah, they pay the $20 fee or whatever it is. So you make money there. You know, but beyond that, where does it actually translate into um, the bo bottom line for the National Wildlife Federation? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you can look at, you know, across the board costs and things like that in a, a couple of different ways. With the photo contest, what we do, what we do get is donations, you know, sometimes added on to the entry fee and other times, um, you know, just in the form of photos. So we'll, we'll kind of assess and see what the costs um, are that we're saving with photos. Uh, the other thing is, you know, when it comes to our mission, I kind of said this already, but, you know, I think, I think that's one thing that photography in general can really help with inspiring people. And so having those powerful relationships with photographers and, and really getting to know the community is, is important. Um, but, but I think for a, nor like a regular nonprofit who doesn't maybe have the focus of, you know, the visual that, that maybe we have, um, really thinking about ways that you can get your your group involved that also allows them to, I mean, we talk about it all the time, tell your story, that kind of thing, but photography is a pretty neat way to get people doing certain things, you know, um, sharing <laughs> certain experiences. So no matter what your cause is, you could probably tie in a photographic element. It just really depends on the lens you see it through, I guess. The other big goal that we have is getting people outside, and photography does do that. You know, if you take your kid out and you give him a camera and you say, you know, show us the world from your view, um, it's kind of neat what, what you can come back with thinking about things. And so when someone submits a photo, just one more quick question on this, when someone submits a photo, they actually join and they give you their email. Are they now on a special email list that you're kind of nurturing them with email marketing yeah. somehow? Or? Yeah, so um, one of the things, so when they join, when they just join, actually. Um, Meaning no money. They don't pay any money. They right, join, yeah. When they, they just join, they actually go on a, a different email segment where we'll kind of ask them if they want, um, like we'll remind them, hey, you haven't actually signed up yet. You know, it's not too late, those kinds of things. Um, but one of the things we want to start doing because, um, and in fact, we just had a meeting on this and talked about this, but um, is figure out a way where they can still get engaged, even if maybe they signed on, they uploaded their photos, they realized, you know what, I'm not going to win, so I don't want to do it. Mm. <laughs> um, figure out a way to incentivize them so that they still feel like they're part of it, you know. And that's, I think that's the hardest part with a photo contest is if you start to feel like you're never going to win or sometimes we're worried that the, the amateurs will see professional photos and be like, ah, oh, I don't stand a chance, I don't want to enter. Mm. Um, so mm. it's all about figuring out you know how to actually make this this whole experience worth it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I would say that's actually the biggest. You know, you can certainly see, um, I think, a return when you look at the donated photos and maybe the entry fee even. But um, but the hope is really to get more people involved in the work we do. A lot of nonprofits they they think that their job with social media is to tell people what they're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. that, the, and and but the problem with that model is it really just amounts to like one person doing all that work. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas your mm -hmm. focus or your intent is to actually get your people to talk about you, you know. And, and so I think that's really smart to focus on what's what's their agenda, what's important to them. I don't think it's realistic for us to think that, you know, they they just wait all year to join our photo contest and then they do. I feel very fortunate because the National Wildlife Federation has a good brand and, um, you know, whether or not people love us, hate us, I don't, I care less about that and more about what's their experience with wildlife and how can we make it, mm -hmm. you know, how can we make it stronger. Hmm.